Chuka Torres. A lot of people know me as Chuka the Barber. I'm out of Sacramento, California. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm also a barber. I've been a barber for six years. The president, CEO, and founder of the Rich Barber Company. I built it on the basis of really motivating and inspiring barbers to think rich and be rich in skills and knowledge. That's been our goal, that's been our foundation, and that's basically what we're doing. Being rich in skills and knowledge is basically understanding that, you know, there, there's there's two there's two pieces to the recipe. You know what I mean, there's two ingredients. If you can develop skills and you can develop your talent and be able to give like a great service and at the same time acquire the knowledge to expand your horizon, then you can take those two, mix those together and really build a foundation and build your own empire and take it as far as you want it. If you, if, if you limit one, then, you know, it's kind of like, okay, well, you know, you're missing another piece. So a lot of times, you know, barbers may, you know, develop the skills, but then that's as far as you go. But if we can add the knowledge to it, which is what is a lot of times kept from us, then we're able to really um, tap into industries, tap into markets, tap into revenue avenues that might have not been available if we didn't really open up our mind and really think outside the box on things. You know what I mean, so that's basically what it is. Uh, you know, we just want to motivate, inspire, think rich. You know, there's only one way to live, in our opinion. You know, so if, you, if you're gonna think, you might as well think rich. The thing that inspired me, as far as like, you know, the things that inspired me and the obstacles that I saw from just being a barber was basically like, okay, there's only so much money I can make in a day, and if I'm only getting paid off my own efforts, then there's only so much money I can make in a day. You know, and we all want to make money, and we all want a barber. We enjoy what we do, but at the same time, like I believe in having options and choices. You know, I don't believe in overworking. You know, uh, extensive labor, painful labor. Labor. I don't believe in that. I believe in you know doing it to where you still can love it, enjoy it, but at the same time, you know, being able to have options and choices. So when I got into the barber industry, you know. I said to myself, I said, let me build this foundation. Let me get my skills to where they need to be, where I could attract customers. And let me then use that to grow and start other businesses. And I've done that, I've started other businesses and I've always had a second revenue uh, stream of income coming in the majority of the time being a barber. Um, the Rich Barber Company is more of something in my lane, uh, more of something I'm more passionate about. It's, it's, it's my main vision right now, you know, going going for it. To me, being an entrepreneur is basically to try and to fail, you know. An entrepreneur is someone who's willing to fail and fail often, you know, but learn from our failures. So, um, you know, like I said, I've started multiple businesses, but I've failed so many times. But each time I failed, I learned something and, and, and it made me more of a person that I want to become. And at the end of the day, you know, it's like sitting down and thinking about, okay, who do I want to be? Like, you know, because at the end of the day, we attract what we are. So it's like, who do I want to be? I want to be someone that feels like, okay, if I have a vision, if I have an idea, I have the confidence, I have the ability to manifest it, you know? And if we think like that, and if we have the courage and the self-confidence to think like that, then we can capitalize on, you know, our ideas, you know, and we can really uh, build wealth, you know, for our families, for ourselves, and really uh, build wealth in our communities. As far as passion, I, I, to me, passion is everything. You know, passion is that motivating force that 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 makes us wake up and go every day. Starting other businesses and being an entrepreneur, a lot of times I was like, okay, I know a little bit about this industry. Let me get into it. So I had a transportation business. Did a little bit with buying houses and, and doing like. Um, investments, you know, no money down type thing. I thought about doing a, a snickerswapmeet.com type thing with shoes. I haven't started a placement agency. None of those had that spark. None of those had that passion, you know, and I'm thinking like, man, I'm over here starting all these businesses outside of my passion. And my passion is really to create, uh, to motivate people, to inspire people, to bring value and to, um, to manifest my ideas. So, when I came back to what I'm doing, I'm like, okay, I know barbering, I know the industry, I know what barbers go through. I can relate to them. You know, barbers are creative people. You know what I mean? We like freedom. So I know when I think, when I speak about uh, being an entrepreneur, bringing revenue in from other sources other than, 
you know, barbering, I, I know barbers is with that because it's like, okay, we all about freedom. You know what I mean? We don't want people telling us when to come to work, how much we gonna get paid. We wanna decide that, okay? If I wanna charge this much a haircut because I feel like I'm worth this much, then I'm gonna charge this much. You know, if I wanna uh, take this weekend off and go on vacation, you know, I don't gotta ask my boss. You know what I mean? I ain't gotta ask nobody. I can just do it. Being an entrepreneur, you know, and thinking outside the box will allow us to do that. So starting all these other businesses, it wasn't a passion of mine. It was just kind of like looking for money, you know, or just, you know, uh, trying to find my way. I mean, but once I found my purpose uh, with this company, uh, the Rich Barber Company, then that's when things changed because now it was like, there was a fire behind me. It was like, okay, man, we gotta do this, I gotta do this. Um, man, I got this idea. I know this will bring value to the industry. I know this will help the next barbers. Let's put these things together to where people could come and be like, okay, this company helped me succeed. Like, they helped guide me and help motivate me to succeed. So when you grab one of our razors, you know, it says the rich barber on it. So you're suggesting to yourself, you know, and, and, and you're building that confidence, you're building that rich mindset because it's like a rich barber environment. You know, your razor say the rich barber, the shares say the rich barber, I mean, a drape, all that. So when you when you when you create that environment for yourself, then you know the odds of really creating that mindset is, is really going to increase, and that's what we want to do. And we don't want anybody to forget that they that everyone we all have riches within us. You know, we just need to learn how to manifest them, and sometimes we just need that extra motivation, that extra inspiration to really bring that out of us, so that it doesn't like dormant. You know, because we live once, and uh, you know, don't nobody want to look back. You know, on that deathbed and feel like. You know, they didn't do all they could do, you know what I mean, because of uh, certain limitations and uh, things that we just didn't know, you know. But shit. I learned ambition from Pac. No, I'm just <laughs> no but I learned, I learned like ambition from Pac. So I, I, I've always been like an ambitious type of person, you know. I, I learned at an early age to never cheat myself, and that's one thing I never did. I never cheated myself, you know. I grew up wanting to play basketball, that was my first love, you know, that was my first passion and nothing, you know, nothing could move that, you know, that was my passion, I dedicated time, effort, I never cheated myself whether it was, uh, you know, whether the coach was looking or not, you know, I realized that, you know, if I cheat myself, I'm only cheating myself, you know, if I limit myself, I'm only limiting myself, limiting myself. and if I, if I, if I don't give the effort today, there's no way I can make it up tomorrow and that day's gone. So I learned that at a young age and I think it was from a book called uh, that John Wooden wrote, one of the uh, best coaches in history in college that won all those championships at UCLA. Um, Kevin Johnson that gave me that book when I uh, got his uh, MVP at Sac High. So that book really inst instilled like principles in me and even like listening to Pac and just having that ambition and that passion because passion moves people, you know, and it moves us. So going from there to um, really, you know, picking up a Robert Kiyosaki book, Rich Dad Poor Dad, that just really opened up a whole new world of opportunity to me. Because it's like, if you, it, it, I, I truly believe if you seek, you find, you know, if you, if you ask, it, it, it'll show up and if you knock, that door will be open. And so I kept seeking and I found that, I stumbled upon that book. And when I got that book and I read it, Rich Dad Poor Dad opened up a whole new world of opportunity. So it was like a, a, a form of relief. Cause at the time I had just had my daughter and I'm like, shit, what am I gonna do? You know, I was, I was uh, driving these trucks, you know, making deliveries and stuff. And I knew how to cut hair, but I hadn't started barber college. So when I got that book, I was like, okay. So I knew right there, I said, okay, well go to barber college and that's my foundation, but build that business that you can use to invest in the, you know, keep buying assets. So I learned that from Robert Kiyosaki. I studied a lot of his material, um, got into a bit of investing and stuff like that. Um, really loved it, but um, at the same time, still didn't have that business revenue. Um, then it came, then I got more into like uh, success philosophy and that would really change things because I really realized that it wasn't about what you know, but it's about what you become. And that we can read things, we can know things, we can be able to regurgitate things unless we become that which we read, that which we learn, and we take the time to really become that, then it's not gonna really bring value to our lives and stuff like this. So when I learned that, I said, okay, it's not about what I know, it's about taking time with what I see value in. If I pick up a book and I see someone valuing it, I gotta take time with that book, I gotta meditate on the words that it say and stuff like that so that I can really become that book, become 
the principles that are stated in that book and really apply it to my life and the and attract the things that I'm looking to attract. Like a lot of times people think like they see like especially with the internet, you know, um, the social media and a lot of things, um, it comes off that people like have success overnight, you know, but a lot of times, man, like if you can be the fly on the wall and really see like all the small ingredients that goes into, you know, a business or the person that's running that business and really like the Bridge Barber Company, it didn't start, you know, when the company was founded and when the company started in 2012, it started before that as an idea, as a vision, but then even before that, success is all about the person that you become in order to manifest that success. So so when people look at success, they think it's all oh, okay, um, it's just doing this, this, and this, but in, unless you're that person that can do this, this, and this, and hold that vision, before you long enough to manifest it, then otherwise, you, then, then most likely you're not gonna manifest that vision. So really like, it's all about that person you want to become. And, and, and I'm like, you know, choose that person you wanna become, cultivate that person you want to become, feed that person the knowledge, the information, the motivation, the, the things that's gonna sustain that vision and, and, and keep that flower or garden growing. That way you can manifest that shit because at the end of the day, you're only gonna become, and you're only gonna go as far as that person you are. And uh, and that's the key ingredients to things and, and success. Because if you look at every successful person, they all failed, but each failure made them stronger because it was all about the person they were becoming in the process. It was all about the process, and the end result is none but a manifestation of the, the cause, which is you know, the persistence, the ingredients, the, the, the confidence, the courage, the creativeness, all those things come together and bring about a certain result. So like a lot of times, like being in a barber shop and being around barbers or just people is like, a lot of times, man, like we believe that it's our, we believe what we believe is right all the time, you know, but you know, we gotta search for fruit, you know? And then, then if it's not the fruit that we want, then we gotta go to the root and we gotta change that. And that'll always be ourselves. And that's just one of the things that I wanna get across, you know, when it comes to, um, you know, developing that rich mindset is first, you know, find those things. We all have good qualities and we all have those qualities that hold us back. Identify those and keep the ones and cultivate the ones that help us and identify the ones that are holding us back and transmute those into something positive to where it could help us move, you know, in the position of life that we want to, you know, that we desire. When it comes to influence, it's like, I've heard someone say, um, one of my uh, friends, and actually one of my clients, he told me this, uh, we were talking about some things, and he said, um, you know, pick your profits, you know, pick those influences, those that, um, you know, in certain industries, you know, whether it's if someone, you know, playing basketball, you know, my profit was like AI, so I studied AI, I studied his, his moves, you know, Ellen Iverson. I studied like the way he, you know, went off of screens and, and his crossover, man. I, I remember watching this crossover over and over again, you know, and this was like when the internet, when, when they had computers at the Boys and Girls Club and we were just figuring out what the things was. And I was like, man, I could, you know, watch this crossover over and over again and then just practice it. And, and, and whether, you know, when, when it came to business and it came to like developing cash flow, it was uh, Robert Kiyosaki. When it comes to success philosophy and just like a, a, a life um, foundation for success, it's Napoleon Hill, you know? And, and, and when, I, when I stumbled upon Napoleon Hill, it's like that's when everything changed, you know? And a lot of people from the New Thought Movement, um, early 1900s is what I, I studied a lot and what really uh, interests me because it was like breakthroughs in science, it was like uh, the industrial age, all these breakthroughs was coming through. And during the depression, you know, is when Napoleon Hill was really doing a lot of his work and his like book was being re released all around that time. And, it was, and that era has produced more millionaires than any other era ever. And it was during the depression. And it's like when I when I hear hear that I'm like man it's not really about what's going on in the world it's on it's all about what's going on inside you inside your mind and then that is the cause and the effect is just the circumstances that you find yourself in and learning that is just really is like freedom you know to me and and relief.
from outside circumstances and, and, and being finding out that I can dictate my life, I can change my circumstances, and I can influence my surroundings and my situation, and I can do it the way I want to do it. So Napoleon Hill, you know, studying his material, and I still study it to this day. I, I read his books over and over again, and I just adopt more and more of the philosophy and, and, and his teachings, and it's did not, nothing but bless me in a, in a positive way. And, you know, I recommend his material to anybody that's looking to find success in life. I first got into barbering and cutting hair was because we, growing up, we couldn't afford to get haircuts. So as a kid, you know, you look at my pictures and shit like that, I always had an afro. My mom used to just cut my hair with a pair of paper mates or something like that. <laughs> so um, always had an afro and they, like they used to call me a chuka fro. You know what I mean? Because, you know, everybody getting haircuts and shit. And, um, and we just couldn't afford them, you know. I've been to a barber maybe about two, three times. I started cutting my own hair at, I was probably about 11, nine or 11 years old. I was probably about 11. I started cutting my hair, that's the first time I cut my hair. My uh, little brother's dad had uh, brought his clippers over because he was like, man, I'm gonna cut you guys' hair. There was like something going on as far as, I think it was like an eclipse. And a friend of mine, they had a telescope and everything. So I was like, man, I wanna go see the eclipse, man. So. You know, I dipped out, came back late, and uh, he was like, man, shoot, you missed out, you ain't you're not getting your hair cut. And I was like, what? I was like, well, you know, I was like, man, I'm looking forward to getting fresh, so I can't get my hair cut, so let me go grab these clippers and start cutting my own. And that's when the first time I started cutting my hair, and I was like, man, I need to cut the back. And he was like, man, you grab another mirror. And I grabbed another mirror, and like, now I can see the back. So then I cut my hair, you know, I, Tow it up, everything. <laughs> Went to school feeling fresh though, you know, it was better than the afro. And uh, and from then on, I, I cut my own hair. And um, I cut my brothers and I cut people in the neighborhood. And that's how I started. And that's how a lot of other barbers started. And uh, still to this day, you know, I cut my own hair. Sometimes, you know, I might have someone else do it, but I, I prefer to do it myself because I'm so used to doing it. But um, that's how I got started. You know, and, and, and that's just a, a, a example of how we can turn every, you know, struggle, every failure into something positive that will benefit us because, you know, what if I, what if my mom could have afforded haircuts? Would I be here today? You know, would I, would I be able, would I have this company? You know, because, you know, my first love was basketball, but then that, that went away. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so, um, every, defeat every failure you know because if we look at it a certain way it's all about your perspective it can definitely be something positive and something that will benefit you that you can definitely learn from it was like a constant struggle you know what i mean at, at, there's times where it's like you know what i mean you young you know what i mean and, and, and you don't have the you know the necessities all the time or you want more and, and you got this ambition to get more but at the same time it's like you know you think like man what is life worth you know what i mean like, why am I here if I'm just gonna struggle and shit? Growing up, man, I dealt with a lot of like, just like anger, you know, and just like frustration because my dad wasn't around. I didn't, I didn't meet him until I was like, he was around until I was like two. Then I didn't talk to him, conversate or nothing until I was like 18 or 19. And I didn't really go see him again until I was 19. And cause he, he he's, uh, he's Nigerian and he was in Nigeria. So, um, but he was out here when, you know, he uh, was with my mom. So, um, growing up was just really, I really missed my dad and shit. I was always trying to find father figures. So, I think that kind of helped kind of guide me into finding, like, always searching for, like, value within somebody that that I could get, you know, that could teach me the ropes, you know, life and shit like that. So, um, growing up was tough, you know, but I loved basketball. I loved, uh, always had a passion for certain things, creativity. Um, I was the type of kid that, uh, you know, break an old broken radio open and see what's in it, you know what I mean? Or I was the kid trying to, you know what I mean? We couldn't afford no type of go-kart, nothing like that. So I'm the one uh, going to get a shopping cart basket and shit or knocking the wheels off, trying to put some wood shit together, you know what I mean? And make a little go-kart, you know what I mean? And I did it, you know what I mean? <laughs> so it was like, um, you know, so I was always creative and stuff like that, man. And, and, um, and as, as I grew up, you know, um, I just never want to be the norm, you know, I'm like, if I'm going to live this life, you know, I don't want to be, you know, regular, you know what I mean, I don't want to be 
you know, I want to reach great heights. And I always believed I did, I, I was, you know what I mean? And everybody has that, you know what I mean? But there's that sometime, there's that point to where it's either you're going to continue to think like that and want that, or you're going to accept your circumstances and be like, man, it ain't possible. And I just want the company, I just want to, you know, influence people to where, man, they, they, they say, man, fuck that, like, it's possible. And, and really, you know, chase those dreams and shit. And uh, shit, we either gonna die or get rich, man. One of the two. <laughs> See, one thing with like barbers, and one thing I know is just like, okay, like, you, there's different types of barbers. You know, we just gotta accept the fact that some of us, you know, our conversations, you know what I mean, the things that interest us is different. When, when you're someone that's constantly trying to grow, your conversations is different, and the, and, and the clientele that you attract is different. A lot of my clients, man, I sit down with them and I'm cutting their hair and it's nothing but an exchange of benefit and value. It's like, oh, bro, what's, what, what book you read? Oh, bro, you got to read this book, man. This book really will get you on your game, you know, in this aspect or that aspect of business. Or this is a great book. You need to read it. And I, and I got clients that I'm exchanging shit like that all the time with. And, and even to the extent to where it's like, it's, it's like connections, relationships, resources. All these things are at your at, at, at your dis, at, at your uh, disposal, or whether you're gonna use it or you're gonna not. Because you're a barber, you're taking, you're giving somebody a service, you're making them feel good about themselves. They want to reward you in some type of way. They want to give back some type of value because you're giving them some type of value. And the thing is, for some reason, when it comes to barbers and clients and the relationship, it's like you know they're paying for the haircut, but it's like they really value you more than the money that they give. Like they really value you because. It's more than that monetary exchange. So being able to like, you know, uh, give game to my clients, you know I mean, whether they're young in college or, you know, asking me questions and stuff, it feels good to be able to say like, yeah, man, like pick up this book or, or stay motivated or, uh, uh, man, you can do it. You can do whatever you want. You know what I mean, Just choose what you want in life, stick with it, believe in yourself and, st and be persistent with it. And then when it comes to, uh, you know, clients that I have that are very successful and that's had successful businesses, it's like, man, they're gaming me up while they sitting in my chair. You know, they're, they're, they're connecting me with uh, their resources. That conversation would have never came up if all I talked about was shit. Um, I mean, sports and, uh, uh, you know, talking shit about, you know, movies and talking about someone's haircut or just finding other things to talk about. It's like, man, you attract what you are. Call them like aha moments or maybe like, you know, when a light went off was really when I realized, okay, first of all, it's like I took responsibility for my life and for everything that happened in my life, whether it was good or bad, it was all me, you know what I mean? And when, when a lot of times, like growing up, having that mentality, like the world is against you, or if, if you think the world is against you, the world is against you. If you think the world is for you, then the world is for you. So once I took like responsibility, for everything that happened in my life, whether positive or negative. And then I, I realized, okay, it's really simple. You know, it's, if I do this, then this will happen. If something else happens, then I was wrong about what would happen, but now I just need to tweak what I do. And then if that happens, okay, now I found my recipe. So if I do this, then this will happen. If I develop my skills and if I become a good barber, then people will come to me and my clients will have good haircuts and they'll be happy about their haircuts. Then they will tell people about me, which will bring me more clients and so forth. So now it's just a domino effect. Same thing with business, same thing with everything else. You start attracting these certain things by the things that you do. So now we're not dealing with, okay, we're, we're, now we're like choosing, okay, well, what do I want? If I give value, then I get back value. If I give more value to more people, then I get back more value and it's cause and effect and it's simple. So um, when, you know, I'm no different than nobody else. You know, I've, I've had all most struggles and I've, uh, you know, I'm not formally educated. I never liked school, so I got through school, but a lot of times I, you know, <laughs> cheated or, you know, on tests or, you know, someone did my homework or, you know, it wasn't, I never enjoyed school, but I do feel like I'm educated in the true sense of the word, you know, educate, but 
but I'm no different than anybody else. But what I realized was, if I want to change, I must create an environment that harmonizes with the change that I desire. So, a lot of times people say they want to change, or you know, they see I'm doing a business, or whatever. They say, man, I'm gonna start my own business, booty woo. Uh, can you give me some advice or where do I start? And the next day they forgot all about that business. Because we're dealing with habit now and shit, so we're not dealing with like, you're not going to change overnight. But if you create an environment that harmonizes with that desire, then the odds of you sticking with it has increased because now, you know, you writing things on your wall, you're reading certain books, you know, you picking up the Rich Barber Razors, you know, you're, 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 you're associating with people who think a certain way in tough neighborhoods is things that could keep that keep us in that environment. But if we can visualize, you know, better things, if we can write motivation quotes on our walls and in our mirrors and read, you know, inspirational uh, books and things that help guide us and stuff like that, if we can associate with the right people, if we can just develop that right mindset, then we're no longer in that environment that environment can't hold us no more. We may be there temporarily, but eventually we will have to be removed from that environment because you call, you call for it, you know, you, you, you created it. And at the end of the day, man, I'm a creator, we all creators. And so shit, just let me create, man. <laughs> In the next 10 years, I see the Rich Barber Company. I see it as one of the top companies in the, in the industry and one of the most, if not the most influential company in the industry. I feel like, like I just want, I just want barbers to say, man, like I want them to feel how I feel about the things that inspired and motivated me, you know, and I want them to feel that way about the company, you know. I want, I want to have, I want barbers to say, man, you know, I'm successful or I credit some of my success towards the rich barber philosophy. And that's what it's about, man. Like, I see myself in each barber. You know, a lot of times we come from the same places, you know, we deal with the same issues and stuff. So, I don't wanna withhold any knowledge and information from my fellow barber, you know what I mean? I don't wanna, I don't wanna be like, oh, I can't show you this, or I can't give you this game because you might be competition or you might take my client. You know, that ain't me. I mean, I'm like, man, what? I'm gonna give you everything I know, all the information I know, you know, and I, and I want you to do, I want you to do what you feel that you need to do with it. You know, I want you to build your empire. You know, I want you to get rich, you know what I mean? To whatever that means to you. You know, rich may be 5,000 to some people, rich might be 20,000 a month to some other people, rich might be 100,000 a month to other people. Depending on, you know what I mean, whatever, lifestyle you desire, I want you to be able to have it. And I want to, I want the company to help motivate you to get that. I want the Rich Barber Company to inspire and motivate and change the mindsets of this generation of barbers, you know, and the generations to come. Um, to, to change the way we do business, to change the way we think about ourselves, to change the way we influence our own industry, and, and, and to recognize the power that you have as a barber to influence your neighborhood, your community, your city, you know, the industry, however you wanna take it. I mean, where you, wherever you wanna go, you know, and, and, and bring up, you know, and stop, stop, stop feeling like there's a, a limited source of wealth or um, recognition, but just to lift up the next man, you know? Because it's like, a lot of barbers didn't have, you know, a lot of us didn't have no other choice but to become barbers. <laughs> I mean, shit, wasn't nobody gonna hire me with no 211 robbery on my record or shit. So it's like, so a lot of times we ain't had no other choice. You know what I mean? But that don't mean we need to settle though. You know, cause everybody make mistakes. The man, the, the top man at fucking, the, the CEO at the top corporation made a mistake too in his life, you know. A lot of times coming from, you know, the places we come from, you know, a lot of times there's a lot of criminal activity. That's all you see. Sometimes that's what you kind of lead to. But sometimes, you know, we can snap out of that. We can wake up, you know, we can wake up and see the opportunity and get our peace. And, and, and I just want barbers to recognize that, you know. One thing is like, 
you want to get the most out of everything, you know, and then you want to get the most out of your time. And so, as far as like with products, like you know, being an inventor and inventing products and creating new ways and trying to like make things, I wouldn't say easier, but just more like efficient to where the barber can focus on what he does. You know, don't nobody want to be just like having a, a, a car. Like, we want to drive a car, we want to focus on riding a nice car, we don't want to have to deal with the issues and shit. We just want to get the most out of it. You know, so when it comes to tools, we, we just want, so when we build products, when we build, when we create products, when we have ideas, we want it to really bring value, efficiency, even if we can slip some inspiration within the product. You know, that that's the goal. When it, when it comes to like growth and like personal development, we have to think about what are the things that can't be taken from us? What are the things that's going to be there and always be there? So when you're talking about, you know, talent, you know, you got a lot of talented athletes, but if they get hurt, then you have it. What do you have? So talent has been taken from you. The one thing that they can't take is your mindset. You know, that can't be taken from you. That can always be used. So don't lose that. Don't miss out on that ingredient. You know, you can be a talented barber and cut hair and be the dopest barber in the the world. You break that hand though, and then what do you got? So it's like, we need to not also develop our skills and our physical abilities, but also our mental abilities, for that's the things that we can't lose, you know? So when it comes to, um, you know, securing our financial future, or just our future in general for the lifestyle that we want, we must develop that mindset because that's always gonna be there and we can always go to that. I want people to know how important that second ingredient is. Learn how to cut hair. Yeah, learn how to cut your ass off and, and give great service, but cultivate that mindset so that no matter what, you can bring value to this world and you can be compensated for it.